Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. So this video is going to be all about rendering in Claw 3D and how we can get some really amazing studio style renders without using any additional software. So we're not going to be using Blender or Cinema 4D or any of the other softwares that a lot of people think that you need to use to get some really good renders. So this is perfect for beginners or anyone who doesn't know how to sort of figure out that workflow between Claw 3D and other programs. Now, before we even enter the render window, there's a lot of things that we need to do in the 3D and the 2D window to make sure that our render is gonna look as realistic as possible. So first off, we're gonna start with the pose of our avatar. So I see a lot of people rendering in this A pose. Now this pose is actually a design pose and it makes it easier for you to get the pattern pieces around the body. And it's not necessarily made to, uh, to be used as a rendering pose. Now, if you're trying to make the most realistic looking render possible, you really don't want your character to be stood like this because you know you, you don't see anyone in sort of photo shoots for magazines or any editorials stood like this in the photo shoots. Even this pose here, which is the attention pose, I still think this looks very unrealistic. Um, it's very stiff and, and sort of, like I said, unrealistic. Um, we can get them to look a lot more realistic than this. So, uh, I've, so I've created a few different poses. Uh, even if you do want them to be sort of stood uh, up straight like this, I do recommend changing a lot of things. I recommend changing uh, maybe how far the feet are stood apart or the position of the hands. You know, the hands look very, very unrealistic like this. Um, and even, you know, something as simple as like turning the head maybe or dropping one of the shoulders slightly just to get, give them a more human-like appearance rather than sort of really stiff robot-like appearance. So this is the pose that I'm gonna be using for the purposes of this video. It's a pose I've made. Uh, it's very similar to the one we've just been looking at. Uh, however, the hands are supposed to be in the pocket. So I'm going to just give the trousers a bit of persuasion just to get the hand actually in the pocket. And we've, I've also, in this pose, the feet are also slightly uh, another, look, you know, shoulder width apart, as well as changing the uh, direction that the character is looking. And just like that, we've created a much more casual street style um, pose that looks a lot more human like and less robotic than the standard attention pose. So now that the pose is looking good and more realistic, let's look at the shoes. So if you haven't seen my last video, I made a video of how we can import real shoes into Claw 3D. As you can see, I've got some New Balance here. Something as simple as adding real shoes into Claw can really, really elevate the look of the, of the final render. So for example, if you were using something from the default shoes folder, uh, such as like the white tennis shoes or anything like that, they look really unrealistic. And that is gonna bring the overall realism of your render down by quite a lot. Uh, as you can see, I've got the socks are just slightly poking through, so I'm just going to get rid of the foot part of the sock. And to stop the sock from colliding with this part here, I will pull these down a bit. I'm going to just deactivate the shoes for now. So I'll click and I'll right click deactivate avatar just to stop these from colliding. And I can pull this part of the sock down. Now, obviously, you don't have to use uh, you don't have to use socks if you don't want to. Um, I just like using socks as I think it, again, it just looks a lot more realistic. So next up, then we need to make sure the particle distance of our garments is at the lowest that we can go. Uh, comfortably with our computer which is typically uh, five I wouldn't recommend going lower than five as you do actually get a warning on um, you do get a warning message pop up when you change to anything lower than five that it will uh, sort of severely slow down the simulation on your computer so five is perfect it looks really really good really really small things like this stone island badge on this jumper this could potentially go lower than five um, but still I think you're probably not going to notice much of a difference so anybody watching this who doesn't necessarily understand what particle distance is within Claw 3D, I'm going to change my view here to the wire mesh mode. And we can see 
that every piece of fabric is made up of this triangular mesh where each point is a certain distance apart in millimetres and that distance is the particle distance. So we are on 20 right now and as you can see the gaps between the points are quite big uh, and the fabric will only fold and drape on these points and lines. So the, le the less amount of points we have on a piece of fabric is going to be a less realistic looking drape. Now if I highlight everything and change the particle distance to 5, now as you can see this is a drastic change from 5 and there's thousands and thousands of more points of data and, and lines and dots in the fabric that will allow a more realistic uh, simulation. So now we've changed to 5, if we simulate and let the garments uh, adapt to the new particle distance, because when you change particle distances you might see that the, the clothes look a bit um, a bit square and a bit uh, sort of blocky, in especially in folds and things like that. So you just need to simulate just to let it drape a bit more and get rid of those um, unnatural folds and things like that. So you can see now just how lovely these garments are draping. And we are just about ready to go into the render window. So we switched over to the render window and this is a preview of the render I did before I changed the poles, obviously. And as you can see, it looks pretty terrible. And, th and this is what you see when you first load up the render without any sort of uh, settings changed. And this is why people think that rendering is so bad in Claw because before you change the settings, it does look pretty terrible. But if I now refresh this with the new paws and everything we've just added to the character, the shoes, it's gonna start to look a bit better already. Okay, so now, Let's go into the, each of the different settings and start changing things to make this look even better. So we're going to start off with the image and video properties, which is this tab. And the first thing we need to change is the actual um, resolution of the image that we're going to make. So this it's going to be on 40 by 640 default. And we do want to change this to a lot higher. Now, I the minimum I will work with is 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels. Now I do like to work in uh, a square orientation just because then it makes it super easy to post on Instagram, things like that. Uh, and we also want to change the PPI resolution as well to 300. Now there's no point in actually going higher than 300 PPI uh, because if you take these images into Photoshop after and do some touch up work in Photoshop, Photoshop works in 300 PPI so it's going to be downscaling the image anyway and 300 ppi is more than enough, it looks amazing. So next up is the background color and texture. So I always recommend having a background color that complements the outfit nicely. So in this case, I'm going to be using uh, a green. So let's have a look for a very nice green color. Um, this one's pretty nice. And then I'm gonna just refresh to see how that color looks against the garments. And as you can see, it looks a lot better than that horrible pink color. But I think I'm gonna change the color just a little bit more of an army green. And let's see how that looks. Now, every time you change a setting in any of the menus here, you do need to press the refresh button here to actually see the changes. Otherwise, you know, if you're working with the render stopped, for example, like this, the changes aren't going to immediately show uh, in this window. Just something to be mindful of. And now the texture of the background. By default, it will be on this uh, vignette number one. And this does not look great, in my opinion. It looks very unrealistic um, because if, if we're pretending that this green background is, is a person stood in a studio with a green backdrop, you're not going to have these sort of rings around the background. So I like to change this to sort of any of the other, um, any of the other ones really, apart from the vignettes. So any of the diagonal and any of the gradation ones. So I'm going to change it to number one for now, uh, but we may need to change this again down the line just to match it up with the lighting to make sure that we've got everything sort of lined up in terms of the background shadow as well as the shadow from the avatar. So I'm going to go with diagonal one. Okay, now down to the lighting tab. Now this is arguably one of the most important things to get right to make sure that the renders are gonna look good. Now the default lighting in the render scene in Claw is just this dome light and it looks terrible. Um, there's really no sort of 
highlights or shadows or anything like that. It's all just sort of one colour. Now, luckily, in one of the recent updates of Claw, they've added in lots of different lighting presets. Now, this makes life a lot easier because before we had to add in all of these lights from up here, the rectangle, the sphere, the directional light, all of these, you used to have to add them and sort of play around with them and place them. And it was very, it was a very tedious process. It was very long. Now, I do recommend still playing around with these lights just to sort of experiment and see uh, how these lights can affect rendering but in terms of this tutorial we're going to just go with one of the presets now i like to use uh, light number seven as i feel like it gives the most sort of um, highlight and shadow contrast out of all the lights which looks really really good and another really important thing to turn on is ground shadow now as you can see on the render at the moment it just looks like our guys just floating there uh, but when we turn on ground shadow it's going to look like he's actually stood on the floor and not just floating. So I'll show you that now if we refresh. Now that already looks a hundred times better. We've actually we've actually got some shadow, some highlights, and we've got some a really nice shadow on the floor uh, cast from our avatar. And it looks really good already. And then last but not least is the render properties. Now, starting off with the finished conditions, the noise threshold for a realistic render always wants to be on the lowest it can possibly be, which is 0 0.001. For anyone who doesn't know what noise is, basically it's, uh, it's, it's just like grain. So the, the least number we have this on, which is this 0 0.001, the less amount of um, grain we're gonna have in the image at the end, uh, as well as max render time. So the longer we leave this for, uh, to a certain extent, you know, you, you're probably not going to want to be leaving it for like 100 minutes or something. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I think, is a very good number if you've got a decent PC. Uh, I tend to just leave it for about 15 minutes and I think it looks really, really good after. So we're going to change that to 15, as well as light and material quality. Always wants to go on very high. You don't ever want to render on any of the other settings apart from very high. And in terms of settings and render properties, that is everything done. Now there's one more thing that I like to do uh, to make my renders look that much more realistic and that is to get rid of the avatar. So unfortunately in Claw 3D the avatars do not look realistic in the slightest. Um, obviously the, the newer avatars are a bit more realistic looking than the old ones. And I think that the newer female avatars are not too bad looking, but I do still tend to hide them in most of uh, my renders. Now, I also think hiding the avatar looks very, very cool, and it gives a very quirky looking render, as we've got our render that's sort of floating in place in the shape of a human with no human there, and I think it looks really, really good. Now, as you can see there, when I pressed Shift A to hide the avatar, we lost the shoes as well. So all we have to do to lose the avatar but keep the shoes is we double click on the avatar to highlight everything or we can click, right click, select all faces and then we just, while we're holding shift still we just want to click on the shoes to unselect them and now we've got the entire avatar selected apart from the shoes and over here in the property editor I'm just going to lower the opacity down to zero now back in the render window if we now refresh and now as you can see we have a very very nice quirky style render the garments look very, very realistic. We've got some real life footwear in there and without any sort of um, unrealistic avatar sort of holding the render back. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, we might have had to change the background texture in the image and video properties. However, this one actually lines up very, very well with light number six. So as you can see, the light is coming from this side because our shadow is cast on this side. You can see it lines up very well with the background texture as the shading is also on this side, whereas the light's on this side. But for example, if we say chose diagonal number two uh, to start with, the lighting would actually be on the wrong side. So as you can see, our shadow from our avatars on this side, but the shadow on the background's on this side, so it doesn't match up. So that's another thing that we need to make sure it is spot on. Now I'm going to change the lighting now uh, to one that I made myself which with a bunch of rectangle lights. Now as you can see there's a light above um, the subject's head and I'm going to press refresh and we'll see this and we'll see how this looks. And as you can see this looks very very cool as well. Um, 
but the background obviously doesn't match up too well with the shadow. Now, because of the light's directly above his head, you can see the shadows uh, dispersed quite, um, quite widely around his feet. So what we can do for that, instead of having a directional texture, we can change this to one of the gradation textures where the light is at the top and the shadow is all at the bottom. And this is gonna look amazing. That looks fantastic. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this render now for 15 minutes and I'm gonna show the final product at the end. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you like the end result and I hope that you learned something along the way and I can't wait to see some of your renders made within Claw 3D. If you've got any questions or anything that you're stuck with, just leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. But thank you very much for watching this video. Look out for the next one and I'll see you later.